Hey there everybody, coming at you today with a first impressions video of the Condor Primitive Bush Knife. Now this is literally my first time holding this knife. I'm on a camping trip with my friends and family and one of the guys brought this with him and I thought I'd take the chance to get my hands on it, take a quick look and see what I thought. I've always been intrigued by this knife based on the shape and size, the actual design, and the overall features available, and I'm actually pretty happy to get my hands on this today. First things first, I had always kind of thought this would be a high carbon knife, and it is. Although this is the 420 HC steel, um, it's not like a tool steel, but it is a high carbon steel, and I'm not 100% positive about uh, 420 HC, but I think it may be semi stainless. I'll have to look into that, but like I said, I'm not exactly sure. Now, the first thing I, I can tell you when you hold this in your hand is it feels like it has excellent balance. Uh, this spine is probably 3 16 of an inch or something like that, and so you know it's got a pretty good overall weight and size and pretty good heft. Um, it is slightly blade weighted forward, so I mean, you know, it'll be hopefully pretty good in chopping and general camp tasks. I mean, this is a pretty large knife, um, so, you know, it's certainly going to be good for overall camp tasks, bushcraft duties, and things like that. Now, what I can tell you right off the get-go is this does have a very, very sharp spine. This should be more than suitable for striking a ferro rod. I'll try that in a little bit, uh, but for now, I'm just kind of checking out the knife. Interesting features. I mean, this blade is very wide if you look at the overall you know, depth of the blade, and obviously the actual sharpened edge is way down at the bottom. I mean, I don't know what you'd call that. I don't know if you would consider that like a Scandi grind. I mean, it's it's kind of like a Scandi grind. I mean, there's literally, you know, no bevel to this until it gets all the way down to the bottom. So this entire tool is just flat, the same thickness from the spine all the way down until you get to that profiled edge. Pretty interesting design when you look at the tip. This is a fully sharpened swedge you see all the way up at the tip, but just at that very, very end of the knife. So if you're using this to baton, unlike some other knives with sharpened swedges, you're not going to beat the snot out of your baton. So pretty cool, and I'm sure that would actually be a nice tip for, you know, uh, carving out like a bow drill set or something like that, or, you know, anything where you need, uh, you know, to, to pry or, you know, dig into wood and really get that tip in so anyway pretty nice uh, nice little feature there now this does have wooden scales I'm not sure what wood this is I have to look into this like I said I wasn't necessarily expecting to uh, get my hands on this blade so I didn't do any research up ahead of time but it looks like it might be like a walnut something like that it does have hollow pins holding it together and you can see that uh, the guy whose knife it is has chose to put somewhat of a wrap probably to help him with a little more traction here. The handles, uh, the scales do seem slightly slick. They're just, you know, very nicely sanded. And so, you know, they are a little bit on the slick side. So adding something with a little bit of traction like this paracord seems to help. In terms of the overall fit and finish, this handle does seem like it was made pretty nice. I mean, you know, I, I feel that there's no hot spots or no little burrs or anything on this tang. Seems like the, the wood is sanded nice and flush to the actual metal tang of the knife. So in terms of fit and finish, I'd say pretty darn nice. Now the knife does come with a pretty interesting sheath. This is actually a waistband carry. There's no loops or anything. So what you do is you slide this into your waistband and use this tab to go over you know, the uh, waistband of your pants. And so it's actually, um, I didn't think it was going to be very comfortable at first, but I have already tried it and it felt pretty good. Uh, kind of interesting the way they do this, but it's limited in carry options. I guess that's the only downfall, but at the same time, with a nice waistband carry, it does seem pretty secure and gives you the ability to keep the knife on your side right where you need it. With the knife mounted on my side, you know, I find that I might need to swing it a little more over on my hip so it's not gouging me when I bend so it slides past me. You know, if I put the knife further towards the front, I do find if I was going to bend over, it would jab me 
right in my stomach or up into my ribs. So if I'm careful and I pay attention, get that right over on the side, fits pretty good. Gives me a little more mobility and when I'm moving around, it doesn't seem to bother me too, too much. Now, like I was saying, this sheath is a waistband carry. So you can see I've slid it down inside my waistband and that tab just tucks right over my belt line and holds it secure. And so you can see where the knife will go down inside the sheath. If I grab it here, basically slide it right down inside that sheath. Now what I can tell you is it's a little bit tight. If you're not careful and you don't pinch the actual sheath uh, to allow the blade to slip by, you might cut it. So just for me to actually put this in, I gotta stop the camera, pinch the sheath with my other hand, and slide the knife down and into place. I mean, just trying to get a little feel for how this is gonna bite. And it feels like it's biting in pretty good. I'm not really hitting that hard. I just like to kind of feel the edge a little bit when I get started with a blade to see how deep it's going to bite just with little kind of chops. And then maybe we'll get into something a little bit heavier here. Let's give it a whack, see what happens. I'm kind of trying to do this by myself with no tripod, but let's see what happens. And you can see some pretty nice chunks flying off there. I might have to shoot this again later with a tripod, but definitely see some nice chunks flying off. I mean, my technique right now is not the best, but I just wanted to get an impression of this. But what I can tell you is, you know, I, I really would like to see a little lanyard here looped off so I could at least get my pinky or maybe two fingers in there and give me a little additional length on the end of this so I could get back a little bit more and have some security while I'm holding this. I mean, right now where I'm ho holding the blade like this, it does feel like there's a little tendency to slip. I mean, you have this little pommel at the end that's kind of allowing my hand to stay gripping onto the end as best as possible, but I always feel better with a lanyard, and I think that would definitely help in this case. So let's just try a little bit of stabbing here. Again, this isn't my knife, so I'm not gonna go crazy, but you know, nice penetration. Here, let's try it right here. I mean, the knife definitely sticks. If I wanted to drill this out, try drilling this out a little bit. It actually feels pretty nice. The uh, blade is pretty well centered um, in line with the handle, so spinning this knife is comfortable. It's not awkward. Get the point right down, start working. I mean, that's that's pretty nice right there. So I think that seems to be pretty suitable for its use. Feels pretty good. All right, so in terms of using this for carving tasks, just an initial impression. Blade slides real nice across this bark. Feels comfortable in my hand. I definitely love the length of this. Feels really good. Has a nice little ping as it uh, you know, whacks off these little bits and pieces of this branch. All right, so let me sharpen this into a little bit of a spike here. I definitely get a good feel from the edge right off the get-go. Some knives, it's difficult. You really need to find the edge before you can start working with it, but I feel like naturally I go right to that grind angle and I'm able to get into the wood. Take some nice slices. I can tell you, there is a sweet spot from like here to here, where you really, as you start carving, 
get into the wood and it does a nice job right through that belly. It's giving you a really nice slicing, um, you know, real nice slicing action. But uh, even further back on the blade, nice and controlled little sort of push cuts. Feels pretty nice. <laughs> Should burn well then. Better, better than the twigs we've been throwing on the fire. That'll be good. Okay. That's enough to get us going. So that edge. That's not too bad right there. Looks pretty good. But that tip took a little abuse. Spine is overall overall pretty good, but not happy about that. Down in here, at least. Oh yeah, look at that spine is like super sharp. I mean, it's carving this stuff off like nothing. Make a better little pocket here. Make sure it's getting trapped right on the top of this nest here. There we go. This is sweet for that. I mean, I bet you could like debark a tree with this too. Yeah. Give this thing a whirl. This big. You have to start making it wider, not taller. It's a going. You have no room to make it wider. You just make it like out the side. No, because that's how. Whoa. No problem. All nice. Excellent. This worked awesome. All right, guys. So I'm adding this audio after. I've edited this video down just to point out the fact that if you look at this particular clip, you can see that the tip of the knife is already broken. And that happened while I was doing the little bit of drilling that you saw me doing. Now this video was shot prior to my batoning footage and the tip was already broken so I know it happened while I was doing the drilling. And to me that's completely unacceptable. It's a shame because I'd otherwise really like to recommend this knife. I think it's a nice shape and a nice size, a great weight and it's really comfortable in the hand. Now I'm working with my friend, going through Condor, trying to get this issue rectified. I'm gonna see if they can cover this under warranty. I'm hoping that they will, but I guess we'll just have to see how that goes. So anyway guys, I hope you found that a little bit informative. I hope you like what you saw. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.